I'll wait for you, Rob. We're good. Excellent. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councillor Mackey. Okay. Excellent. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Councillor Mackey. Present. Councillor Gamble. Present. Councillor Burley. Excellent. Councillor Mackey. Present. Councillor Burley. Present. Councillor Carlton. Councillor McQueen, sorry, Councillor McQueen will be joining us in a few moments. Councillor Desai. Present. Councillor Patterson. Warden Hicks. Here. Councillor Columbus. Present. Councillor Keeveny. Councillor Boddy. Councillor O'Leary. Present. Councillor Woodbury. Present. Councillor Milne. Present. Councillor Soever. Present. Councillor Bordigno. Present. Councillor Robinson. Present. Councillor Hutchinson. Present. We have all members in attendance with the exception of Councillor McQueen. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We'll turn next to the land uh, acknowledgement. We acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the Anishinaabek, the Six Nations of the Grand River, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat, Wyandot, Wyandot peoples on whose traditional territories we gather and whose ancestors signed treaties with our ancestors. We recognize also the Métis and the Inuit whose ancestors shared the, this land and these waters. May we all as treaty people live with respect on this land and live with peace in peace and friendship with all of its diverse peoples. Council, is there any declaration of interest, pecuniary or otherwise? Seeing none, I will simply say that if one does come up during the course of the meeting, I would ask you to declare it at that time. All right, item number six is adoption of minutes. Item 6A is County Council and Committee of the Whole Minutes dated July 14th, 2022. I'm looking for a mover to put it on the floor. Moved by Councillor Burley, seconded by Councillor Robinson. Is there any discussion? And I call the question, all those in favor? Is there anyone opposed? I see none, that is carried. <clears throat> Item 6B is the Long-Term Care Committee of Management uh, Minutes, which are dated July 12th, 2022. Moved by uh, Councillor Woodbury, Seconded by Councillor Hutchison. Any discussion there? I call the question then. All those in favor? Is there anyone opposed? That is carried. Thank you. We do not have closed meeting matters. We're now on to number eight, the Public Health of Gray, uh, excuse me, Public Health Gray Bruce uh, Board of Health Minutes, uh, dated May 27th, 2022, uh, moved by. Councillor Patterson, seconded by Councillor O'Leary. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Zayad is here, I believe. Will you be speaking to the minutes? Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to provide the uh, Grey Bruce Health Unit update on the minutes for uh, the Board of Health. I will update. Uh, I will provide an update on three items, COVID-19 and monkeypox uh, virus, opioid drug overdose crisis, and vaping regulation submission to Health Canada. It appears that Dr. Zayed is mooted. Oh. There we go. Sorry. 
uh, the provincial key metrics uh, with rela in relation to uh, COVID-19 uh, to COVID uh, that is provided by the Ministry of Health every two weeks uh, through a scorecard showed uh, the situation right now in terms of cases that is 14 day decrease or no change in cases uh, for the seven day average. Uh, the deaths, there is uh, also a 14 day decrease or no change uh, with a, a, 70, a seven day average daily new death uh, is uh, nine and 80% increase in seven day average versus the two weeks ago. Uh, the positivity, there is 7% uh, increase versus two weeks ago. Uh, outbreak, uh, the outbreak is 8% decrease and the hospitalization show a uh, 54% uh, increase, the ICU admission 30% uh, increase. However, if we uh, talk, if we uh, compare uh, Ontario um, versus the global, uh, the global aspect, we find that uh, the situation is a slightly increase overall, but not as much uh, compared to other uh, countries. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the health units or in, uh, in Ontario, if we go uh, into more details, uh, 13 public health units uh, that showed uh, hot spots, uh, which is which meaning uh, increased significant increase of more than 200 new cases cluster in the last week. Uh, so Grey Bruce Health Unit is not among those uh, health units. Um, in terms of uh, the average uh, weekly doses for uh, for Grey Bruce Health Unit, there is a slight increase, but not uh, not above ten uh, per day. And uh, again, uh, there is uh, this slight increase uh, is not really um, uh, profiled on or reflected on the severity or uh, the mortality. In terms of uh, uh, the uh, again the uh, the number of cases in general as a heat map or a positivity, uh, the uh, we find that uh, compared to uh, the the weeks before, um, we there is no uh, there is no uh, much increase in in positivity that uh, that requires uh, any change in in uh, the public health restrictions. Uh, that's uh, with regard to the uh, to the disease itself. So overall, we are uh, we are in a in a good in a good shape, and uh, we are um, there is no sort of uh, scaling up of uh, of uh, of the uh, uh, for infection uh, control. Uh, in terms of COVID vaccine, currently we are providing at least a weekly uh, vaccine clinic uh, through the community uh, uh, centers across the board in Grey Bruce. Uh, we also provide vaccine uh, uh, by partnering with uh, pharmacies and primary care. Uh, we focus on the low coverage areas and applying various strategies to meet the various contents uh, of vaccine acceptance. Uh, we partner with the Ministry of Health uh, to provide mobile and indoor clinics uh, in addition to the clinic that uh, the public health unit is providing. Uh, we're working on engaging the primary care for vaccine delivery for children below five years, which is uh, will be uh, available uh, in uh, the next few days. Uh, in, in addition uh, to that, we have a full preparedness uh, plan for vaccine, uh, for COVID response and communication strategy. Uh, that's uh, with regard to COVID uh, uh, pandemic and COVID vaccine and uh, preparedness. Uh, with regard to monkeypox, we had uh, one case uh, two weeks ago, uh, and uh, the uh, the situation uh, the, the 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 person already recovered, and uh, of isolation, uh, and the acquisition event was in Toronto, and uh, there is no other contacts. Uh, education uh, to high priority population is uh, is ongoing, and we provided uh, a vaccine clinic. Uh, for prophylaxis for a certain group. Uh, in terms of, uh, of the opioid uh, situation, uh, we have uh, a COMO uh, subgroup 
uh, that work on opioid prevention and identified nine priorities for the provincial action. Uh, in addition to that, there is a prevention subgroup committees uh, from that work group. Uh, and uh, the, um, for this, this um, first uh, uh, regarding the, uh, the nine priorities that was uh, also enclosed in the alpha resolution that was uh, moved uh, by, uh, uh, by alpha and the Como uh, executive, uh, we, uh, the main nine priorities include a multi-sectoral task force, uh, including people with lived experience, uh, expand the access to harm reduction program and practice, ensure uh, sustainability of support uh, for substance use prevention and mental health promotion initiative, expand the collection analysis uh, reporting of timely integrated epidemiological data, expand the access uh, for uh, to treatment of opioid use disorder, uh, address the structural st stigma, discrimination, and related harms, advocate to and support the federal government to decriminalize personal use and possession of substances, and uh, increase in, impaired with increased inverse investment in health and social services, acknowledge and address socioeconomic determinants of health, systemic racism, and their intersection that are risk factor for substance use, providing funding and other support to enable consistent community leadership uh, by people who use drugs and by community organization. Uh, these are the nine priorities uh, uh, that were uh, uh, adopted uh, for the public health action. Uh, the work of the subgroup um, uh, include a, a standing committee for one year period and will be uh, reassessed at the end of the year. Uh, it is a par partnership between local public health and public health Ontario. Uh, the committee is created to support public health uh, unit work and prevent uh, substance related harms with a focus on evidence based childhood and youth intervention. Uh, co uh, co chaired by Gray Bruce Health Unit and Public Health Ontario, and the membership of 10 health units, including Toronto Public Health, Waterloo, Peterborough uh, Public Health, Kingston, Southwestern Public Health, Simcoe, Muskoka, uh, Brand County, York uh, Region, and uh, uh, Porcupine Health Unit. So there is a variation of uh, the expertise and, uh, and experiences which will uh, enrich the work uh, uh, across uh, this uh, this, organ, this work for the intervention of uh, geared toward prevention. Uh, the main objective is understanding the evidence-based intervention for prevention, uh, for preventing substance use among youth and mitigating adverse childhood experiences. Uh, the second, uh, understand evidence-based uh, integrated uh, social determinants of health and address the impact of structural discrimination, describe the local programming in Ontario, and develop a logic model or framework to map out uh, uh, areas of coverage and gaps for intervention and consider overlap with mental health promotion. Uh, these are uh, the main objective of this, uh, of this work group uh, or subgroup committee. The deliverables, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is focused on three deliverables this year, develop an environmental scan for early child and uh, youth programs mapped to evidence of effectiveness uh, on substance use out outcome, given that uh, we have uh, many overlapping and many services. So that's this environmental scan would be really very important develop a data summary and knowledge exchange on the current epidemiology, and that include uh, analysis of the COMPASS data, consider data from public health unit, and consider analysis of data um, from Ontario Drug Policy and Research Network and the Office of the Chief Coroner. And the third objective is related to a grant proposal for conceptual framework. And this conceptual framework, um, that we have now currently a grant uh, that we are working uh, on uh, with uh, uh, CIHR. 
what what we will benefit from this uh, provincial uh, group uh, it will benefit the local context in terms of uh, human health prevention across the lifespan project or matrix project that is uh, uh, implemented or pl and planned and implemented uh, in uh, in uh, Grey Bruce Health Unit as an important uh, strategic uh, goal and direction. Uh, people uh, with lived experience, we need to uh, have more uh, insight on uh, and engagement uh, uh, for people with lived experience, evidence-based intervention for the current projects and the partnership to focus on efficiency and the streamlining intervention uh, in addition to evaluation and identifying areas of positive assets and areas of learning and improvement uh, across uh, Graybrus. Uh, so that's the update for uh, the opioid. And the last update is related to uh, endorsing uh, the proposed regulation. Uh, there was uh, uh, regulation related to vaping. Uh, and uh, the, uh, there is uh, this proposed regulation were described as a first approach to introduce vaping product reporting requirement and ensure that the government non-informed of vapor product industry practices is, uh, uh, is important to support the effort of health and vapor product manufacturers should be held uh, to the same standard of accountability and scrutiny as tobacco product manufacturer um, uh, through the enactment of proposed regulation and uh, which include uh, reporting on vaping product sales and information on sales of vaping products by brand sold in Canada and for export and reporting on ingredient uh, information on the ingredient of vaping substance by uh, is, is very important um, the same way as uh, there was regulation for uh, for the tobacco. So that was uh, uh, the summary of uh, my update. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Dr. Zayed. <clears throat> uh, Councillor and Chair Patterson, is there anything you wish to add? Thank you, Warden Hicks, and good morning, County Council. Yes, I have three uh, highlights to share. Uh, the board has a brief five-minute educational update at each meeting, and at this meeting, we reviewed the roles and responsibilities of a public health manager. I find these educational notes to be very informative, and they give board members a better understanding of the programs and services that are provided by the health unit. The board also finalized the orientation package and discussed the length of the county appointments to the board. It was recommended that board members be appointed for a two-year term rather than one year. And I do want to point out that this is a recommendation and not a requirement. The board also approved the 1% mandatory programs based funding increase granted by the Ministry of Health. Mandatory programs are cost shared between the Ministry of Health and Gray and Bruce counties. It is a 70-30 split. So to be eligible to keep the additional funding from the Ministry, Gray and Bruce counties would have to match the 1% increase. The total contributions between the counties would increase by 27,000, with Gray's share being just under 16,000, and Bruce County's share would be 11,000. And this motion was approved by the Board of Health. And that's the update. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Uh, Councillor Sawever, you have a question. Yes. Um Certainly, um, one of the things that I've been watching is the the COVID in wastewater in Ontario, and it's it's going up, uh, not as fast as it was a few weeks ago, but it's still on the rise. Now I know that we we do take uh, samples um, at our Craigleaf wastewater treatment plant as well. Um, where can one access that data for the COVID uh, from the local area? Uh, I know a lot of health units have that data posted, but I couldn't find it uh, here. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mayor Sover, for your question. Uh, actually, uh, this data for us 
uh, is uh, is available uh, by uh, by the, and uh, and integrated by the data analyst. But unfortunately, the data is very uh, confounded and uh, skewed data that is not helpful uh, because uh, we only have 16% of gray bruce, uh, the, depending on the uh, municipal water, uh, which is a very small uh, percentage. In addition, that there are many confounding factors uh, with this data, for example, uh, people who are uh, who are residing, not residing uh, in Owen Sound, but comes to work. So there is discrepancy between uh, the weekend and uh, the weekdays, uh, morning and night. Uh, there is a spike, and this spike is not helpful that compared to other uh, health units like Ottawa, for example, where they uh, rely on uh, more than. 95% on municipal water. Uh, uh, so the, uh, this spike is just going up one day and down the next day. So it doesn't really inform us uh, with, the, with data that is helpful uh, to have a trend, to, to try to discern a trend from this data. Uh, so so far it's not it's not helpful, but we are trying to see other ways. Uh, the last uh, the last conversation was uh, to try to get only one sample per week, which is a Monday. And still yesterday, the data analyst told me that still there is there is issues with the with the with the confounding factors um, with this data. So we are relying for, with, uh, on what it matters, and we don't want to confuse the public with data that's not reliable. Okay, thank you. Um, so you mentioned Ottawa. Um, Ottawa seems to be a hot spot lately in terms of uh, you know their, their their hospitalizations and their wastewater and everything else, particularly yeah. yesterday's wastewater symbol. Um, now, the AMO conference is being held in Ottawa this year in a couple of weeks. Um, do you have any recommendations on, um, you know, going to the super spreader event? Uh, well, uh, it's, uh, again, using mask, uh, keeping distance, washing hands, and uh, the golden, uh, the golden uh, rule is uh, stay at home if uh, sick, but uh, for others, I mean, but uh, anyway, the keeping the distance and wearing the mask mostly all the time is important in gatherings. And uh, keep, keep safe. Thank you. Are you finished, Councillor Swever? Yes. yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, then it's perhaps time to call the question. All those in favor of the report? Anyone opposed? That's carried. Thank you very much. And thank you, Dr. Zayed. Thank you. Okay, we have one bylaw at number nine. It's uh, with respect to um, road 19 and 21, the roundabout there in the town of the Blue Mountains. I need a mover to put the item on the floor. Moved by Councillor Milne, seconded by Councillor Bordignon. Any discussion on that bylaw? Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, that too is carried. Onwards now to good news and celebrations. Councillor Desai. Thank you, Warden Hicks. Um, I'm happy to report that this past weekend, uh, the Rotaract Highlanders had their annual cruise night. Uh, they last had it in 2019 uh, and then missed two years due to COVID. Um, it was a great turnout, uh, hundreds of cars lined up uh, down Main Street. Um, and at the end of that, um, the Rotaract Highlanders generated $2,404.07 uh, in profits, which will be donated to um, I've Got Your Back 911 in support of mental health initiatives for first responders. Um, in a truly community event fashion, there was other organizations as well that um, uh, benefited from their volunteer activities at this event. Uh, the Rotary Club of Markdale uh, Warden has had a barbecue, which uh, for, uh, which provided food for the attendants, and the barbecue generated an estimated of fourteen hundred uh, dollars in profits uh, for Rotary Club activities. 
and the road relics uh, generated a further 1,200 in uh, ticket sales for their motorcycle draw, uh, which I'm on the fence about because I did buy a ticket and this is just more competition for me now. Um, so uh, the, the ticket sales for the motorcycle draw was for uh, the proceeds were going to Chapman's House Hospice. Um, there, there was over 200 cars on Main Street and they were overflowing the backup lot where the old food town used to be in Markdale was full as well. Um, and the Highlanders uh, <laughs> expressed their gratitude to everyone who volunteered and everyone who participated. Thank you, Warden Hanks. Also, sorry, um, I do. I would be remiss if I didn't thank uh, Pat and his staff um, for being very expeditious with the permit process. Um, I, it was the turnaround time was a record turnaround time, and uh, we were we were very glad, very grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Desai. Next is Councillor Clumpus. Thank you, Mr. Warden, and good morning, County Council. Um, I just wanted to uh, bring congratulations to all of the 40 recipients of the Queen's Jubilee Commemorative Award uh, that was presented on Sunday by our MP Alex Ruffett, his, uh, his gathering. Um, this is an important award um, that recognizes the uh, expertise, but also the community engagement and support of many, many folks from uh, Grey Bruce and, uh, and Owen Sound, his constituencies. So my congratulations on that. And just to highlight that three of those recipients um, were from our municipality, Marjorie Davison, a longtime resident, um, and uh, uh, Martin Riordan was another one, and our own Harley Greenfield. So we're very, very proud of these folks, and I know there's one more to come, but uh, uh, those folks deserve it, and uh, we're so proud of them. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Thank you, Councillor Clumpus. And uh, Kim, do you want to maybe mention one other person? Thank you, Mr. Warden, and thanks so much, Councillor Clumpus, for uh, bringing this forward. Um, I would like to, uh, you know, let Council know and, and to acknowledge um, our own Kevin McNabb, who received a, a Jubilee Medal for his leadership and initiative and, and in the first responder category, and most specifically, his uh, his work on community paramedicine and the support of Outreach Service, or, or SOS. So big congratulations and thanks to Kevin. Okay, so next is Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Warden, and good morning, uh, County Council. Uh, first, I would just like to say, based on uh, CIO Wingrove's uh, announcement, uh, congratulations to Kevin McNabb. That is quite an outstanding honour. Um, I do want to just mention two things. There's always something ce to celebrate uh, in uh, Gray County. Uh, Sogging Valley Conservation, or rather Sogging Valley Children's Safety Village, um, located at Sulphur Springs Conservation Area in West Gray, held their Super Safety Days 2022, which uh, was a great success. Uh, it certainly is safety programming for children uh, that uh, as a, a council here, we certainly support. And Newstadt Springs Brewery hosted an open house for the village of uh, Newstadt this past opportunity to reconnect and uh, celebrate the village. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. Uh, next is Councillor Boddy. Thank you, uh, Warden Hicks. Yesterday I had the pleasure to of uh, attending the Pan-African flag waving, uh, waving, raising, excuse me, at uh, Georgian College and uh, attended with Kim and with Selwyn. Um, <clears throat> MP Ruff, uh, new president of Georgian College, Kevin Weaver was in attendance. Um, they raised this flag for the first time in recognition of the Emancipation Day, and they chose to do it in on sound, given our long history of uh, emancipation here. So it's uh, it's pretty special. Uh, on March 24th, 2021, the uh, Canadian government, Parliament, uh, passed a unanimous resolution to uh, recognize Emancipation Day and, uh, and declare it for August 1st. Uh, well, I can't remember the first mover was from the uh, Liberal Party, but it was seconded by our uh, Alex Ruff, which is pretty special to have private members bill being passed is unusual and unanimous vote, of course, is 
also pretty unusual. So it was uh, pretty special and something that I think Alex deserves a lot of uh, credit for. Uh, before that, Senator uh, Wanda Banks and several others had tried to get it through, and it would you know, go to the end of the line, of course, uh, as the uh, parliament dissolved for elections or otherwise, it kept getting bumped off the uh, table and having to be brought again. So it was. Uh, yeah, it, it's nice to see that recognized and see the work done by Alex to uh, pull in his party members and make sure they're, uh, they're all there for it. This weekend, we celebrate the 160th Emancipation Day here in uh, Owen Sound, or really, I think it's more of a great county event than an Owen Sound event, given our history. Uh, it's the oldest running, continuously running uh, festival or picnic in North America, which is pretty impressive. Uh, we all know there is Indigenous people here long before we were here, but after the War of 1812, the uh, British government promised uh, any slave or black person that fought alongside their side land in uh, in Canada, and they were given land, as we know now, in the Priceville area, and um, they started to come in 20, sorry, 18, 15, 16, 17, 20. You know, the surveyors from England, Ireland, Scotland wouldn't have been here until the mid-30s or late 30s, so long before white settlers came into this region, there were black settlers that uh, were welcomed, welcomed certainly by the uh, Nawash. So on Friday night uh, at uh, Grey Roots Museum, there's a presentation. We have to be there at six, but I think it starts at seven, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, speeches and educational things, and it's uh, Diane Brathwaite is the speaker this year, followed by the uh, picnic at Harrison Park, where it's been held for 100 plus years starting at 10 a.m. Uh, with ceremonies there and then some pretty amazing music all day long. So if you are around, it's a really good event to come and uh, and attend. A lot of the uh, historic families from the area come back to the picnic and, um, you know, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, fifth, sixth, seventh generation, whatever it is, uh, come back and they bring their families back and they share stories and uh, and meet their uh, their cousins. And it's a, it's a special day. So I encourage everyone to come. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vaughty. And next is Councillor Keaveny. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Mr. Warden. I wanted to mention that there's going to be a special open line show for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound, former MPP Bill Murdoch on Bayshore Broadcasting's AM radio station 560 tomorrow morning. Murdoch, who's 77 years old and has hosted the open line for many years, as many as three days a week, is in failing health. He is currently in hospice care after being diagnosed with cancer in recent years. Listeners are invited to call and share memories and say hello to Bill, who will be listening. The show will start after the 9 a.m. news. The number to call is 519-376-7777. So I hope lots of people will call in and share a memory with Bill. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Keaveny. Uh, Councillor Patterson, you're next. Thank you, Warden Hicks. Uh, just sharing that if you're looking for something to do this weekend on Saturday, the Hanover Raceway is holding its annual uh, Dream of Gore Glory race with three-year-old trotters from all over Ontario racing. The purse is $50,000 and it's also being advertised as an extravaganza event for fireworks. So it should be a good evening. It's gonna start at 6.15 once only. Normally it's an afternoon uh, event. So uh, if you're looking for something to do, come on out. Thank you. Thank you. I do not see any other. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Councillor Carlton. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Just backing up to the Platinum Jubilee Award winners, our own George and Bluffs Carol Barfoot was one of the recipients. So we're quite proud of Carol for receiving that. Thank you. Very good. I saw pictures of the coins. They're quite nice, aren't they? All right, uh, have I got everyone now? I think I have. That said, we'll move on. We'll uh, go to adjournment. Uh, so I need a mover, uh, moved by Councillor Mackey, seconded by Councillor Gamble. <laughs>
All those in favor? Anyone opposed? That is carried. Thank you. We'll take a second to turn over to Committee of the Whole. 